Yo, what's the deal, Les? Welcome to another episode of Long Days with Yanni. That's me, Yanni the singer. I've had a little work done. Uh, I'm looking a little younger. I'm looking a little sexier and less mustachy. But uh, make zero mistake about it, I am Yanni. I am Yanni, and I'm coming to you live from the Acropolis right now. Take a peek. Here we are at the Acropolis. I'm a Greek god. I'm a representative of my people. We're going to take back Turkey from Turkey, even though we never had it. But we're definitely taking back my dad's island of Imbros. And we're taking back that part of Cyprus. Let's go, Greeks. Put on your fucking Air Max 97s that you're still wearing because it's the most popular sneaker in Greece. Let's get our pack of cigarettes and our coffee and a couple of gyros and attack. Let's attack Turkey. Let's do it. We are Greek. We we are strong. We're the Al Bundy of countries. That's what Greeks are. We always talk about the glory days, but now we're selling shoes. But we're always talking about the greatness of antiquity. That is the greatness of Greeks. Here's the thing. Greeks are like, you know, like what's something that's calm and then once it gets activated. Greeks are like the don't start none, won't be none of fucking our own shit up until we have a common enemy. We're kind of like that. We're kind of like we're kind of like gremlins. We're cute and cuddly and just fight amongst each other. But when you give Greeks a common enemy, they will win the World uh, Cup in Europe against all odds. I called it the World Cup, even though it was the Euro Cup, because who gives a shit? Who fucking gives a shit about your dumb sport until America starts dominating it because it's popular here? I don't care about Zidane Zidane. And why do you have the same name twice, dog? Couldn't you fucking parents diversify? Why is he called Zidane Zidane? Did you ever notice that? He's got the same name fucking twice. I'm not repeating your name. I don't have fucking Tourette's. This isn't a Martin Scorsese movie. Get the papers, get the papers. Your name is Zidane, okay? You're the fucking Beyonce of soccer players and you're retired. He was great. He was great in our generation. Now, you, the great thing about soccer players and baseball players, if you walk them down, you walk them down the street, you could, you would start a fight with them. You know what I mean? They're the type of athletes you look like you could take. Like if I was walking down the street and I saw like Steve Sachs, you remember Steve Sachs? Couldn't throw to first base from second base on the Yankees. If I saw Steve Sachs, I'd be like, Yo, what the fuck are you looking at, dog? I wouldn't even hesitate to fucking pop shit with Steve Sachs. You know, even Derek Jeter, you ever seen him? I've seen him. He's kind of tall. Like A-Rod, I'd be like, I, I, I'd hold up. I'd, I'd warn him that I bite and he's in for it. If he wants to get, if he wants to tussle, I'm a biter. I tickles dicks. It's what it is. Dylan Dallas, sign the fucking contract. Jake Paul, sign the fucking contract. How many times I got to talk to you people, dog? Tickle fight all day, dog. None of that MMA shit, dog. Tickle, tickle, son. But yo, that's the great thing about soccer players. I mean, if you saw, what's the Italian kid's name? He's famous. If you saw Lionel Messi, if you saw Lionel Messi, first of all, why is it, well, his name's Lionel? Lionel Messi, dog. Yo, dude, have, did you ever meet a white guy named Lionel? I knew three black guys named Lionel. First of all, why are you trying to cultural appropriate the Lionel name, dog? You, you see what I'm saying, family? But uh, if you saw Lionel Messi walking down the street and like he bumped into you, like, you, you would turn around and be like, what's up? But if you saw, let's say, um, I'll take, if you saw Alonzo Ball and he bumped you, you'd be like, yo, dog, the sidewalk is yours. <laughs> you start singing Nas to him and say, the sidewalk is yours. It's yours. It's yours. The world is yours. You know what? Here's the deal. Jay-Z definitely run, won the beef with Nas. He, he won the, the rap beef, but Nas did win the commercial voiceover war so nobody gives him credit that he he voices over a lot of Hennessy commercials and Jay-Z doesn't so that's a good thing about Nas here's the thing Nas and Jay-Z is a great a great analogy for like what people's tastes are and how we're kind of divided into two categories of people one people appreciate like talent and the other people like people who look like camels <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jay-Z looks like a camel, dog. He looks like he tried to get me to smoke and I'm 14 in 1984. Camel Joe. Yeah, he looks like a camel came to life. He's got some good songs, though. He's got some great songs and he's a great lyricist, but do, do people say Nas is better just because Nas isn't as popular? He's more of an artist. You know how people like to do that? They like to go, yo, he's not as nice as Nas, but it's like, if he was as nice as Nas, 
Wouldn't Nas be as big as Jay Z and be dating at least Michelle? <laughs> Wouldn't can't can't fucking Nas at least get the number two uh, Destiny's Child chick Michelle Michelle Zalbinger? What was uh no she's not even number two <laughs> Kelly Orion? Yo, they're all Google Maps face. It's wild, yo. When you're in a band with when you're in a band with Beyonce, and then you, Beyonce leaves, uh, the rest of your band is just like you know when you look at Google Maps and they just if a person's there they blur their face. Like, yo, if you, if you heard a Destiny's Child song in your dream and it was Destiny's Child, you would only see Beyonce. Who was that? Kelly Ripper. I don't know. That's the host of the morning. What was it? Kelly. Just Kelly. Kelly, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly, Sean. Kelly, Kelly. Kelly Rowan. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly Rowan. Rowan. Yeah. Kelly Rowan and Michelle Williams. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Those are the two types of people. Some people like art and some people like pop. Like... There's entertainment, like, and, and you can't really knock. You can't knock entertainment. People love Taylor Smith. Is she an artist or is she an entertainer? But then if you said she's an, if you said she's an entertainer, people would go, "That's your taste," and then come see you, and your taste would be you like to look at, uh, you know, you like to look at, uh, you like to sculpt fat people, and then they'd be like, "This kid, th- that's your entertainment." Your, yeah. But it's but it's art. It, you sculpt. So what makes art? Is it the skill level? Because then Rothko's not art. Because he, I could have done Rothko. But you did it. And here's the funny thing. Drew doesn't know what a Rothko is. He's 23 years old. No, no idea. I mean, he just popped out of his mom's puss recently. <laughs> how funny is that? Yo, his mom may still have the line right here. <laughs> yeah. Yo, having sex, because it's my wife's, uh, it's me and my wife's um, anniversary and birthday. They're both in three days. So we got married. Uh, this is our two-year anniversary. We got married March 2nd. And then her birthday's on the 4th. I got married to my wife two days before her birthday, so I would remember her birthday. That's that's great. It Smart. makes it easy. I'm like, oh, yeah, we were married. So, um, but, yo, it's time for Hanky Panky. I mean, we have a kid, but this is my, this is my first foray into post-kid Hanky Panky. It's different. Hanky Panky's different when, you got, when you're watching a baby monitor, okay? <laughs> because you know what it is. We got CIA surveillance on our child at all times. I mean, it is fucking black and white TVs all over the place with sound machines everywhere. So we got to figure out spots to do hanky panky and you got to fucking, you know what it's like? Hanky panky. First of all, I'm saying hanky panky because hanky panky is fucking hilarious. I'm not the only one who's called Jay-Z Joe Camel because there's a, when, he, when he pulled it up, he's like, yeah. So it, it's a well-known thing that the kid looks like a camel. It's what it is, Okay. I look like an inbred human being with one. I look like a cyclops with one eye in between my head. So I look like, yeah, I look like David Duchovny if he got hit by a car and got his face reconstructed. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the funny thing about Hanky Panky. Before you have a baby and after you have a baby. Hanky Panky before you have a baby is no rules. It's like wherever we are, Hanky Panky's happening. It's kind of like MMA was before Dana White decided to civilize it. Right. You know, you could headbutt your girl. You could, <laughs> you could put your toes in the chain. You could put your toes in the, in the fence. It was no rules. It was fun. It was real jail rules. It's jail rules, hanky panky. But then when you pop out another human being and actually contribute to the se- census, once you're involved in increasing the census of your neighborhood, you know what I mean? You get a call and you change from two to three. Now you're talking about no eye gouging. You know, get your hands off the fence, get your toes out of the fence. You're talking about no headbutts, no punches to the back of the head, no knees when a guy's down. There's a lot of rules. I mean, Hanky Panky is full of fun. There's a ref in the room going, hey, that's a, flag- that's a flagrant too. You can't do that. You got, you, got, you got four minutes to get this done before that baby wakes up. Uh, my baby looks like it has a toupee, which is hilarious because her hairline starts back here. She looks like Rudy Giuliani when Rudy Giuliani was mayor and trying to hold on to like three. My baby looks like a substitute teacher. And it's funny because all babies usually look like uh, Winston Churchill. But my baby looks like Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> so it's what it is. I love when I look at the people who are watching live on Instagram because the hearts start fucking flying around the room just because I'm looking at them. You know what it's like? You know what it's like doing this podcast? You know when you're at a game and the, t- the t-shirt gun comes to you and people start doing the wave for a fucking t-shirt. People will do anything for a fucking t-shirt. Why did they not think the cops when people were riding to just pull out a couple of t-shirt guns and send the fucking couple of t-shirts into the crowd? It would have placated all of the crowd and there would have been no property damage 
Why not? When those fucking, when those fucking Trump soldiers, those so, isn't it funny that they're following uh, a guy who who was a real estate tycoon from New York City, and it's just like dudes showing up from Alabama, like I, I'm here to defend Trump's honor, and he's up there getting blown by like a model who's friends with his daughter from in like a gold toilet, you know? It's hilarious, but um, when those fucking Trump soldiers stormed the Capitol. I mean, if the Capitol Police would have had a few T-shirt guns, how quick do you think they could have disper- they dispersed dispersed that crowd? If they shot a T, the crowd would have just started running after the T-shirt, Absolutely. you know. And they had one hot girl just with a real with a surprisingly strong arm just throwing into the back. <laughs> Everyone would just get. There's always that one girl who's like a good dancer. She comes out there, does like three cheerleader flips, and then fucking you're like, damn, that bitch can throw a football. They also have that slingshot. Then deal. they got the slingshot one. Everyone's going, I want that t-shirt. <laughs> it's a three dollar t-shirt. <laughs> it's a gilded. It's not even quality cotton. Nah, it's beautiful. And people go crazy for it. I mean, it's like, dude, your girl's gonna wear it as a night shirt, and then maybe the next guy she fucks after you, you know, because he hasn't moved in yet. He might wear it home because, you know, he dirty, he got, he got some glue on his shirt. There was one time I was wearing another guy's shirt, and that's what made me realize that. Way back, if my wife's watching this, is way back. I remember because, you know, when you stay at a girl's house, you don't have to change your clothes. You spend the night, and if you get a little glue on your own shirt, you got to wear another shirt. And girls only have their size's shirts, or they have the previous guy's old shirts that he left that he glued on. So I was wearing that guy's glued on shirt. I mean, it was washed, but still it was glued on. You know what I'm saying? And then the next guy after me, when he leaves, when he glues on his shirt and he doesn't have a change of shirts, he's going to wear my glued on shirt and it never ends and it builds a bridge all the way to China with glued shirts. You're from Jersey, dude. You fucking, you've smelled like a lot of things. Shawarma stands, drug car. Here's the thing. When you're born in Jersey and you're born, Drew... You were born in what part of Jersey? Hackensack. Oh, dude. I never lived there. Yeah, so Drew was born in Hackensack. So let me just tell you something about someone who's fucking born, uh, whose father was a firefighter and was your mother teacher, nurse? What was she? Maybe. Yeah. She stayed home, mom. Oh, yeah. So yeah, fucking talking to the microphone. <laughs> so you you fought you so basically you fuck you fuck in New York. You're an Irish fucking kid yeah. from New York who's fucking your father was fuck, probably fucking hanging out with Sean Terry, fucking drinking beers. They were fucking, they were having a good time. And when you were fucking delivered, that fucking room smelled like Dracar Noir. There's no <laughs> fucking way that your delivery room, when your dad walked in there, he's a fucking because I don't know if you noticed, firefighters smell like two things. Beer and Dracar Noir. And they put the Dracar Noir on to cover up the beer, but you can't fucking cover up drinking cold beer here. So there's always a, yeah, I just, firefighters always smell like Dracar Noir. You ever notice that? Irish kids like to do a little spritz. Here's the funny thing about Irish kids. Drew's Irish. Here's the funny thing about Irish kids I always found hilarious. First of all, they push all their emotions down, which is hilarious. They, it all lives in like a, a box, like in the bottom of their back by their balls. It's like all the bad thing that, I mean, this, they're the only people who could just like, you know, they could have been like, you know, priests could have ran a chain on them when they were seven and they just push it down and get a job <laughs> and just raise 10 kids and fuck their wives and it's just that they just, they just pour alcohol in it and just push it down. It's just gallons of alcohol over the molestation, you know? Okay, I'm the bad guy. It's not happening at all. The Catholic Church has no problem with it. But here's the funny thing about Catholic kids. They will drink themselves into a frenzy. They will fist fight and never go down. I mean, an Irish kid's face will look like pizza. You cannot get that kid on the ground. (laughs) Do you remember that one internet video where um, the dude who just died from Miami? Well, Kimbo Kimbo Slice fought that Irish cop in Boston. I mean... (laughs) Kimbo basically just collapsed from exhaustion yeah. because that Irish kid would not go down. I mean, his face looked like he had been tortured by a terrorist group in the <laughs> Middle East and they were trying to get information out of him. He looked like a pepperoni pizza. I mean, One. Irish kids will not go fucking down. That's how tough they are, but they bruise easy. So it looks like they're losing the fight, but you got to have a strong win to beat an Irish guy or bite. Biting always is great. But the thing that's funny about Irish guys is that they'll do that. They'll drink themselves to death. They'll fight. They're fucking tough guys. They'll put on Dracar Noir. But they'll also leave the room to fart. Irish guys don't like to fart. You never noticed that? I had no idea, no. 
Remember my ex-girlfriend was Irish? Yeah. Amy, Amy? Or, yeah, her dad is fucking drinking beers, whatever, but like, if he had to fart, he would, go, he would like excuse himself and go to the bathroom. And I was telling that to Burzy, and he was dying because he has, has some Irish friends, and he's like, it's true. Like, they like, it embarrassed to fart. It's like dirty to them. I mean, yeah, they'll fucking curse you out or whatever, and then they fart, and they go, excuse himself, and they'll go to the bathroom and just, they'll just <laughs> fart, and they'll, they treat it like women. Yeah, Irish guys do not like to fart. Did I don't you even go to the bathroom? I just hold it in and farts in my what? stomach. You yeah, know? did your pop was your pops comfortable farting? Oh well, no, my, my pops was the Slovak. My mom was the Irish one. Oh, your mom was the Irish yeah, my mom, one. Wow, my, fucking my Megan. Mom makes potato pancakes and freaking corn What's beef. your mom's name? Uh, Megan? Well, her old name um is Cat Catherine Lapp. Catherine's Catherine. Catherine's a good Catherine yeah. O'Hara. Catherine. Shannon, and Flannan, her maiden Flanagan. name is O'Donnell. So, Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, Catherine, Catherine O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Your dad met her at the bar. She had a yeah. fucking shot there. Tedesco's yeah, she was bar. sitting there with her girls. Fucking, what do you want? You a firefighter? <laughs> well, I'm staying in Jersey. I'm telling you that right fucking now. He's like, yeah, me that a bar. Firefighter, I'm Slovak. Fuck yeah, what the fuck are yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, New York just has a lot of personality, and working class New York has a lot of. Somebody just said potato monkey fumes. Yeah, Irish kids are potato monkeys. And potato pancakes. Is. Yeah. So I mean, here's the thing, Doctor Seuss, no bueno. <laughs> No bueno, amigo. And I just became a father. So here's the deal. I will be searching every single fucking book that sees my baby's face. And we will be looking for objectionable material. So what did he get canceled for exactly, Dr. Seuss? I think he had some objectionable cartoons. I think there was actually some legitimacy to this. Because I think he's got, like, he drew Chinese people with, like, slits. But this was, <laughs> I mean, this comes from an era. I mean, when was Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss is, like, alive in the 40s and 50s, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we were at war. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, he was, we were, at that point, we were at war with Japan, so I'm surprised he didn't, turn, he didn't draw them even worse than that. I mean, I'm sure he drew them. They kind of looked, they looked a little jaundiced. Isn't it funny when you look at old cartoons <laughs> Of Asian dudes, you're like, yeah, he, uh, you can just excuse him. I'd be like, nah, that particular character I think was a little jaundiced. He was a little sick. That's why his skin color is completely yellow. I mean, fuck, when you look at an Asian cartoon from the 50s, dude, it looks like a Lakers uniform. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so obviously yellow skin. He's running with chop. What's so wrong with that? He's rolling with a, with a bowl of soup. Uh, what do they call that? Um, uh, noodles. Ramen. Not ramen. He's got a bowl of ramen, and he's wearing um, one of those um, fan hats. He's got a ponytail. He's got a ponytail. That's not. That's what he got canceled over. Look up what year that was. A Chinese boy who eats sticks, dude. That is not that bad. You know, like you said, compared to the other content that was out that, that time. Yeah, and that's not that bad. I thought it was going to be like you know, you know, when they do like the two teeth and the glasses. Yeah, like, yeah. Ah, that. You know, look, dude. I'm Greek. I wouldn't get offended by a Dr. Seuss characterization. Uh, Greek, even if there was like a little eunuch boy hanging out of a guy's ass, I'd be like, you know what? That's pretty accurate. If you read the history of our people, we're not gay, but we were pretty good at practicing it. You know what I mean? You ever see Jerry Lewis's Chinese guy? Yeah. 1937. I'll I'll say this about Jerry Lewis's uh, Chinese guy. Accurate. I mean, back then, at least they went for accuracy. Is that breakfast at Tiffany's? Yeah, Jacob Jerry Lewis is uh, China man. I think he was probably just, his character was called Chinaman. (laughs) <laughs> but back then, dude, there wasn't the internet. Like, people weren't, like, roaming around, you know? Blackish wasn't on TV yet. You didn't have, uh, you didn't have, what's the Asian sitcom? Yeah, I mean, Jerry Lewis, but full hard. <laughs> but you know who gets a pass? You know who gets a pass? Um, Mrs. Wong from Mad TV, what was that? You looking like a guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When are they going to come after her? Hi, Miss Swan. I'm Officer Tamarant. I need to get a description from you, and it's only going to take us a few minutes, all righty? I saw 18, okay. Oh, great. <laughs> great. Can you describe the perpetrator to me, ma'am? Yeah, he, he looked like a man. <laughs> okay, he was a man. Yeah, okay. 18, I tell you, I saw. It's coming. Dude, they're going to cut. It's, it's coming. coming. You know she's hot. She's going, you know, they're going, you know, she's getting that residual mad TV check going, like, should I give it back? Like, she's trying to get mad TV, like, done. Like, mad TV never happened. She ain't looking like a man. <laughs> Any day oh, now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, does anyone really care? Does anyone really care? Mrs. Swan. Mrs. Mrs. Swan. Swan. She looking like a man. 
I mean, dude, thank God I'm not more famous because they would try to come after more. Here's the thing oh, about. Yellow oh, did they come after her yet? Yup, you knew it. Read what it says. We'll have I you. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Read the headline. We'll have you wanton more. Yeah. <laughs> like, come what is it? Miss Swan is yellow face. We'll have you wanting wanton, wanton more. <laughs> okay. So give credit where credit's due. That is a juicy headline. Yeah. That is really nice. Um, so uh look, I, I've been thinking about these young kids like millennials and um and Gen Z. And you know, oftentimes because what are we, Gen we're Gen what are we, Gen Y? We're X. Gen X. Because we're a little older and all older people get annoyed by younger people. Um, I'm usually making fun of them, but let me tell you why I'm appreciative of millennials and Gen X um, is because I think they're the only ones that can protect us against like falling into a communist dictatorship. And I'll tell you why. Because they, they don't have kids. They don't have kids and they still enjoy like fucking a lot, you know, and they got tons of energy. When your population gets too old, and like that's why it's important to have a, a population where th there's a, a lot of young people because they will fight, they'll resist, they'll hit the streets, they'll go, they'll go knock down government buildings. Like, dude, I'm not doing that. If some guy got on TV and said, okay, you're not allowed to go out after seven anymore, I'm gonna go, thank God, you know? I don't fucking wanna go out. You win, dog. I don't have the energy to fight off a dictator that's the one reason. The second reason is when you're marrying a kid, you're already being conditioned to follow orders. It's like if some guy gets in the TV and is like, you have to take the trash out by this time, I'm going to be like, at least it's not my fucking wife telling me what to do. But I'm already conditioned to like listen to whatever my wife wants. When you have a baby, after you have a baby, you your wife just gets another level of confidence that you're not going to leave. So they just start doing wild shit. Like, the bossing around is almost hilarious. Like, you have to love your wife to stay with them because fuck you. You know what I'm saying? It's like the biggest threat to fucking communism is your taste in guys because, yeah, that's the whole reason why you need feminism is because you guys like horrible people. But so when you find a nice guy who likes you like me, you just treat him like shit, you know, in a funny way. It's like I was taking a shower today. I was, I was taking a shower and uh, she, uh, while I'm in the shower, she comes in the shower and says, um, you're going to get bagels. You're going to get bagels for me at Bagel Boy, right? I'm like, yeah. Could you have waited 10 minutes or maybe texted me later about that? She's like, I just thought about it. So I didn't want to forget. It's like, she, so I was like, oh, you're doing it. You're, do, you're telling me what you want to tell me. It, I could have been taking a shit. I could have been being attacked by robbers. And you'd be like, can you not forget to bring up bagels? Because I don't want to forget later. It's like, how, how about you tell me when it's a little convenient for me? I'm in the middle of a shower rubbing my own balls. You walk in. I could have been, I could have been pleasuring myself. And then you walk in holding my baby. I don't want my baby to see that. I don't want my baby to see what I've been doing for 90% of the time while you were pregnant. Okay, Mrs. Pappas is taking a beating on this episode, but you know what? Stand-up's dead, so I'm just throwing these premises at the fucking camera. Um, so yeah, that's why you got to really be appreciative of, of young people. You ever think about that, how vital they are to sort of being the foot soldiers for our freedom? Old people are going to roll over. Yeah, but it could work against you too. Those young people get whipped up into a fervor. And then, then you got like the, the red guard. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, uh, you know. They follow the wrong leader. You got problems. Yeah. Well, you know, it's called, it's, uh, if they're following AOC, look here. Here's the deal. AOC's got nice bombs. So if she bombs a country, it's like, what are we talking about? Right? Her bomb, like, you know, it's like people are always like, yeah, people say to, yeah, people go, Biden's fucking bombing right now. You understand? Do you understand? Biden is fucking bombing Syria and fucking nobody. So all you're talking about is fucking how evil AOC is when AOC is the only one talking out about Biden bombing Syria. All you do is talk up bad about AOC. It's like, no, nah, dude, I'm talking about AOC and bombing because I'm talking about her bombs. She got a couple of bombs. I mean, that is fat boy and little kid on her chest. What were the nukes called, fat boy and little kid? Um, 
Yeah. Mr. Can you, Manhattan? Mr. Manhattan. I mean, the kid's fucking Gen Z. You know, know. I mean, he just, I mean, he made the nuclear bombs just a fucking cartoon character. <laughs> Mr. Manhattan. You made it an Eminem album. Can you pull up, uh, pull up AOC's tweet uh, about Biden? This is, this is where we're at. This is where we're at. Yeah, she's got absolute, I mean, am I not supposed to notice that she's got jugs? Like, who would you take? Like, cause look, Nancy Pelosi hates her. It's no secret. She hates Nancy Pelosi. I think they solved this with an all out fucking oiled up tits fight <laughs> because Nancy Pelosi has some bombs. Who are you taking in that fight? I'm taking AOC because those are grizzled veteran fucking titties that have been lived through a couple of wars. She, there's, they got a little weight to them because there's been a couple of babies that have been tugging on them. So her nipples are all tightened up. Just the same way Anthony Hopkins, Hopkins, Anthony Hopkins, I just had a brain fart. Anthony Hopkins said in Silence of the Lambs, did they toughen him up? Remember when we was talking about her titties? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, because after a baby fucking sucks in that titty, that titty's a war veteran. Are you talking I'm, about Pelosi though? I'm talking if Nancy Pelosi and, AO tit, and AOC's tits had a fight. <laughs> Oh. If they had a tag team wrestling match, dog, I'm talking Road Warriors <laughs> versus the Hart Brothers. I'm taking the Road Warriors. Grizzled veterans with face paint. I bet you she'll face paint her titties. Nancy Pelosi will show up to the fight with fucking Indian war paint underneath. And also an African garb to remember the fallen to police brutality which is still a fucking wild photo to see when you see all the okay. Democrats kneeling with Africa uh, medallions. I thought I, was in, I thought I was in 1991 again where all white kids were wearing Africa medallions. You remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good time. I'm taking Nancy Pelosi in a tag team fucking titty fight over AOC. No question, no doubt. Let's see the fucking tweet. Okay, so AOC says, here is the profound danger of what, uh, what we just did in Syria. A mad king president. With majority disapproval of Americans right, just one. decided to bomb a nation, blah, 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 blah. Democrats who take war money pass the laws allowing that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fucking, we got some juicy beef within the blue party. Wow. Dog, we always knew that Nancy and AOC and the, the fucking squad versus Nancy Pelosi and her bitches. Like if they were, they should do a dance off fucking, they're going to make a fucking musical about this one day. How funny is that music going to be? Like, like, you know, some old opera singer fucking puts a cigarette out, plays Nancy Pelosi. -na 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 -na. Who's the dude who did Hamilton? If he don't do, oh, yeah, right, right. if he don't make a rap musical with Nancy Pelosi and AOC and the squad versus Nancy <laughs> Pelosi and the old guard with Biden and Obama and they come in like, we bomb, but we talk nice. We put people in cages, but we smile at you. We deported more illegal immigrants than any other president before. But Obama could fucking talk. And he comes in. I used to smoke Newports in college. Michelle is more charismatic than most Republicans. She is my girl. I went to fucking D.C. and lived in Park Slope for a second. He did, by the way. And then AOC comes, goes, fuck you, put him on notice. Drag him, girl, drag him, girl. Drag him, drag him, drag him, girl. Drag him, girl, drag him, girl. Drag him, drag him, drag him. And then fucking the girl with the head wrap comes. What's her name? Oh, Ilan Omar. Ilan Omar comes and goes, I fucking, I didn't marry my brother. Why'd I just make her Southern? I didn't marry my brother. <laughs> This is rumor she married her brother for him to get his papers or whatever. But she left her husband for another white dude. Yo, you living with a white dude? Yo, what you doing, girl? Yo, you got a fatty? What you, what she go? Yo, I love when, when black dudes like, yo, he don't know ma. When you're a white dude, the balls it takes to walk past black dudes when you got a fine black girl with a little bit of a butt. Because you walk by, they're like, yo, ma. They act like, yo, how you did? Yo. And they don't, they're not mad. They're just like, they're concerned for you. Like, how's he going to serve you without the dick that you need? Right. They get concerned. They go, yo, ma. I'm saying, like, but look. They go, like, look, though. How, you know, they kind of, they kind of look at that area and they go, and they disrespect you, too, because they know you ain't going to do that. Like, hey, guys, take, you know, fellas. They know that's not happening, right? Like, yo, but they get concerned. Like, yo, ma, but I'm, not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just saying, how's he handling that? 
He can't. I mean, he taking. He can't handle that. Mom, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me help out. Let me. Let me lend you a little dick, yo, dude. Can I lend? A, can I lend her a little dick, dog? Let me just. I'm doing you a solid, though. Like he's helping out. Like, yo, let me. Let me help you out, dog. You can't handle that. And they know they kind of are right. A little bit. You can handle it kind of, but if shit gets to the dance floor, there's only like two dudes, Justin Timberlake and like maybe one of the guys from NSYNC, the other guys can handle on a dance floor. Otherwise, you're just a white guy. You're on a wall doing a white man wiggle. You're just fucking, black girls just going crazy and gyrating on your fucking junk. And that's it. Um, what do you, I think I made that joke on the last episode. That's going to happen a few times. It's really going to happen. So AOC... Here's, I mean, she called him a mad king. You know who's happy about this tweet? Now, here's the thing. Is she right about what she's saying about Syria? I don't know. I don't know the details of the bombing. You know, generally, is it good to bomb people? No, it's not obviously good. But I don't know what they did. Did they bomb first? You know what I mean? You could argue all you want that we shouldn't have bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but it's like, I mean... Everyone forgets they bombed Pearl Harbor first. So it's like, don't start none, won't be none. Okay, that's rules. Those are, those are American rules. Don't start none, won't be none. So it's like, what did Syria do that they got bombed? I don't know. Were they talking shit about Joey B's wife? <laughs> then you might deserve to catch a couple bombies. And I'm not talking about AOC's tatties. I'm talking about you may get a couple joints dropped on you, son. You, get, you might get a couple croutons in your salad. You know, you might be sitting there and there might be two croutons that fall into your lettuce. You hurt? So I don't know what they did. But generally, is it good to bomb people? No. But that's not my concern here, whether she's right or wrong. My concern is she's an elected official who's tweeting at the president, calling him a mad king. Okay? You can't fucking diss the president on Twitter like that I mean, this is not Nick Cannon's wiling out. You shouldn't be talking like that. You're a fucking congresswoman in the United States. Legislative branch. Yeah, that, uh, that tweet might have been. But from- here's the deal. I, I think that tweet was old. Yeah, that tweet might have been old. No, no, no. The tweet's not old. The well, tweet's new. I can't find the new one. That one said 2018. So that it might have been a Trumpy tweet. But it, on Google, it did say Biden. Can we double check that? Because, yeah. I mean, I, does that make this funnier or sadder? <laughs> I guess it depends on your perspective. I mean, it's 2021, yeah, it so, was, you know, reality is a complete suggestion. Yeah, it might say it's, yeah, it's 2018. <laughs> it was under Trump. It's under Trump. But then there's crickets when we bomb. Oh, that's what she was saying. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I, I, what else is going on in the world? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's funny I was talking about Biden when this is a kind of a Yanni Biden moment where, I mean, <laughs> Joe Biden would have done this and been like, oh, it's 2018. I'm sorry, I, uh, I had that wrong. But yeah, that's a good point. There was a lot of crickets about um, Biden bombing when because uh, they were mad when Trump was bombing. So, but supposedly they say, oh, he's got good reason. I don't know what the reason is. So I don't know if that made that whole section funnier or sadder, but we're going to leave it as is. We're not taking it out. We're leaving it. The the peanut gallery here on my live Instagram is loving it. Go to <laughs> patreon.com slash Yanni Long... Sorry, <laughs> patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. So it's a good time to just plug. Whenever I do something this wrong, just tell me, go to plug. Just go like, you know, it's like when uh, an anchor's in trouble and you're just going like, go to commercial. For me, going to commercial would be go to plug. When, I, when, when my news is like from... Th- if, let's do a two-year window. If I'm within two years, let me ride. But if we go back three years, if I'm saying something is a tweet from today that was three years ago, tell me to plug the Patreon. So <laughs> patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days for bonus content. I'll be at Soul Joe's uh, March 13th. That's coming up. That's for Philly and uh, the D- uh, Philly, New Jersey, wherever. Drive there. There's not many comedy clubs open. It's a heated dome. BYOB, the tickets are going. I know that. Uh, GiannisPapasComedy.com to get tickets to see me. I'm talking to you, Jersey, Philly specifically. It's close to you. Royersford, PA, Soul Joel's Comedy Club. Get tickets. Um, also, uh, March 20th, very important. 
I'm at Gotham Comedy Club, limited seating capacity, socially distanced. Get those tickets, and it's being broadcast around the world. It's a virtual comedy event. I'm going to be going wild, even interacting with you, taking your questions, whatever. We're going to go fucking wild. It's virtual reality. Um, you don't have to have VR glasses or anything like that. It's just on the internet. You could watch it anywhere. So go buy tickets, GiannisPappasComedy.com or RushTix.com. Dot com, rushtix.com, R-U-C-H-T-I-X.com to buy tickets for that. Anywhere in the world can watch me do live comedy, so go get those tickets. Um, bonus episodes up on patreon.com, and of course the character pieces, they're starting, we just shot a few, and they're just going to be every, weekly and all that stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Tell friends, of course, um, this podcast is just starting, you know, what it was episode nine, so it's more very important to tell friends, and... Um, and uh, spread the word about what the fuck is going on. I almost, so I went and I did Flagrant 2 uh, down in Miami, bro. Like, you know, bro, down there, you know, you there's a lot of cocaine, bro. A lot of people say, yo, you're doing a line of cocaine. Yo, bro, that's just called a Cuban coffee, bro. That's what we call that. A line of cocaine is a Cuban coffee in Miami, bro. Here's the thing about Miami. Like, I, nobody has, like, a real job. I think everyone's just, like, a professional sex worker. I think, like... <laughs> If fans only or only fans, it was it only fan. If only fans headquarters not in Miami, I mean, like, what the fuck are we doing? Where's your headquarters? I mean, if there's not a city that speaks to that website, it is Miami, bro. I mean, I almost, I'm, I suspect the CEO of OnlyFans is Miami, Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah, her. So I went down. I did Flagrant Two. Had a great time. Uh, uh, you know, Andrew Schultz tried to fucking grill me on the ending of uh, History Hyenas. Um, obviously, obviously, it was an amicable, mutual decision. We're all, we wanted to do other things, and who knows if we ride in the future. So that is that. That's the end of that. There's nothing to say. Everything else is jokes and just having fun. Our final episode's coming out March 24th, History Hyenas. So uh, watch for that. Uh, it's on Patreon now if you want to watch now. Uh, our Patreon staying up forever. Our whole catalog of all our episodes are staying up forever. So you can just go enjoy them on YouTube, Patreon, uh, iTunes, wherever you want to enjoy uh, History Hyenas, you can enjoy it. So, um, And then I was flying back um, from Fort Lauderdale. I flew back and it was, there was wind. It was like a wind. They delayed the flight because there was wind in, um, in Westchester. And I'm one of these people who like have be, has become too confident in flying because of the stats, you know? I'm real Republic. I'm real Ben Shapiro about it. You know, hearing Ben Shapiro talk about anything, you, you almost feel like he's talking about like he, he could, if he was talking about like safety of planes, he'd be like, well, the data, you know, the data says you got a better chance of, so you just get real confident based on the data. Cause the data is like, you got a better chance of like, of like be, getting struck by lightning while you're playing in the NBA. Yeah, I mean, it's like one in a billion to 1. die. 1.005. 1.005% chance. The accident rate is a 1.005% chance. That's almost like the COVID rate in Florida, brother. Open her up. We've opened Texas up, bro. Full throttle, brother. Texas, you're leading the way. You're to George Washington to freedom, and Florida's coming next, brother. We're John Adams. We're right behind you. Texas, you are a pioneer, brother. Masks are going in the fireplace and slept. We don't have any fireplaces because we live in Texas, but we're going to build them now because obviously there was a big snowstorm in Texas this year, brother, and maybe we needed a couple of fireplaces, but I'll tell you what, brother, when you look at the rate of COVID infection, it's much like the flu here brother we got a bad flu open her up brother open the gates of florida right now my establishment's gonna move to texas if you don't open it governor DeSantis. we we support you and what you've been doing brother but you gotta go full throttle brother hit the gas put her in fifth brother is that the highest gear i don't drive stiff i just uh i only own a bike I own a bike and I drive my bike with my flip-flops, brother. So I don't know if fifth gear is the highest, but Governor DeSantis, it's time to put Florida into maskless fifth gear, brother. Let's ride. Texas needs a partner, brother. You know, Ponch was nothing without Sancho. What was the Chips names again, brother? I forget the Mexican one. <laughs> Who were they, brother? Chips. It was Poncho and John, wasn't it, brother? So look... <laughs> 
Texas and Florida, we're the Poncho and John of America, brother. And I don't want to ride alone, Migo. So listen, DeSantis, follow the lead of Texas and open up full throttle, brother. I want to take my mask off. Anyway, so you have a 0.005% chance of getting into an accident. That is low, dude. That is low. I mean, you got a better chance of like, you got a, Justin Timberlake has a better chance of having a big glue gun than that. There's no quite, let me tell you something right now. I saw his little fucking birthday message to his girl, Jessica Beale. I mean, Jessica Beale is looking the other way with that piece because she just wanted to be with Justin Timberlake. Because let me tell you somehow, I know he's got a little piece because the universe is balanced and he's too good at everything else. So he's got a little, I'm talking about itty bitty, itty bitty short little glue gun. I'm talking one of those travel size Elmer Fudd joints. I'm talking about, you know, when you get those little uh, skinny crazy glue tubes. He's got a little tiny crazy glue glue gun. It could be, it could, I mean, look, it's so happy birthday. I mean, his girl is a stone cold for Rome piece. She is a stone cold. You got to take out fucking a nuclear glue. You got to take out nuclear. You got to take out nukes to shoot her down. Those are the side, the peace guns, the peace guns you need to shoot her down with need to be nuclear. That's how much of a piece she is. He's too good of a golfer, too good at basketball, too good of an actor, too good looking, can dance too good, sing. Kids, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the kid's got a baby carrot in his fucking jeans, cuz. I tell you that right now. He's got chewing gum and a Jufro. That's how he moves like that. He's got a tiny glue gun. I'm telling you, he crosses his leg like a girl. Because he doesn't have to worry about smashing his hog. There's no question. No question, no questions asked. Um, and that's just what it is. So I took this flight back from, from Fort Lauderdale, and there was wind. And um, so as we were landing, like, I didn't know. Like, so, so turbulence in the air, if you're flying and you hit turbulence, the, the plane is meant to be able to take turbulence. It's just, it just can, it can, it can handle it. It can handle it. Like a, like a Jewish man is just bred to get his balls broken by his wife and they like it. I mean, you, Jew, Jewish guys are the toughest fucking businessmen. You go in and they bubby, they, bubby, they bubby you to death. Oh, they will fucking crush your whole business over a Reuben sandwich and walk away after they fucking bankrupted you and made a deal that worked in their favor because they're so tough and brilliant at businessmen and they fucking act like bosses and fucking push people around and then they will get in the car and their wife will fucking yell at them because they got a fucking they got tickets to see George Mason uh, George what was his name Jackie Mason. Jackie Mason or whatever he's dead but who's a who's a big one boogie I don't know they're gonna go see J Jerry Seinfeld at the fucking at the, at the casino and they don't want to be late they don't want to stand in line they and they just the husbands will just take it so fucking planes are aerodynamically designed to take the pressure that a Jewish man is designed to take from his wife. And I've seen it firsthand. I grew up in Brooklyn. My mom's best friend was Jewish and her husband was like one of the biggest defense lawyers in the fucking, in the fucking country. And she would just fucking shut up and he would just, he wouldn't say a damn thing. You put that guy in court, he would probably crush it and get criminals off, drug dealers off. And his wife walked in the room. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go make you a tuna fish sandwich right now, babe. So that's how strong planes are. They're as strong as a Jewish man around his woman. They're designed to take that turbulence. But when you're landing, that's where you're really at risk of the plane crashing during landings. So there was like a windstorm like up there. And um, so as he got close to the ground, the plane can take it higher. But when you get close to the ground... It's the winds pick up. There was one gust that almost flipped our plane. Like, it, like if we were lower, the plane would have struck into the ground. So the wind gust happened. We went like sideways, and then the, the pilot flung it back up. He, he hit the, he went back up. Like we were this, we were like, we must have been like 100 feet off the ground, 50 feet off the ground, and we just felt it go, tech, and, we went to the, and the girl next to me was going, oh my God. Oh my God. She goes, Oh my God, what's happening? And she looked at me and I said, I don't, I, I'm not in the cockpit. It's just like a woman. They're fucking feminist and strong until you're about to die in an airplane. And then she was just looking for a man's 
arm to hold on to. She grabbed my arm. I'm like, I'm married, bitch. Just because I'm fucking about to die, I don't want, I don't want this karma on me. Don't touch me. I'm married. I got a baby at home. I need to text my wife goodbye. Which I did, by the way. That's a wild text to send. Really? Because, yo, it was bad, dude. This was the wow. worst. I've never, I've only had smooth sailing flights. And I told you I'm arrogant like Ben Shapiro. Because of the dad, I'm like, you can't die on an airplane. Wait, what did you say? What did you say in the text? I text, I said, I love you and G. I was, I was, almost, uh, I was almost contemplating not sending it because I didn't want to scare her or make her feel bad. But then I was like, wait, she's just going to find that I'm dead in the morning. But you didn't say anything about the plane crashing? You just said- no, I just said, I love you. I love you. Well, you know, because... Uh, yeah, I, and also, like, I wanted it, when we were low, I wanted to make sure uh, it went through. So I did it, like, right when the guy was taken off. I'm like, oh, shit, we're going to die. And so people were just freaking out, dude. People, there was a lot of people, though. You, you really see people. It's like the Joker said. Remember, he's like, you know, you want to know who they really are? Remember that part? And he's like, you want to know which one of them are cowards? It's kind of true. And let me just say, if you were sitting in 23A and you were wearing half a shirt, and you were clearly a Jewish girl. Yeah, you don't come from. You have anxiety in your family because she was. She was. She was even like when there was little turbulence in the air. I could see her. She would always grab the. She was grabbing the chair as if that does anything. When they go, Ooh, as if you're not in the air, like they're like, okay, at least I'm on solid ground. No, you're not, bitch. Might as well go with the flow and surf it out because you grabbing then is not going to do anything. And um, but then when she turned to me, she goes, "What's going on?" <laughs> Wait, what did she say to me? Just what's happening? <laughs> That'd be funny if I had the info. I was like, well, what's happening is he tried to make what we call a not two landing, but uh, the wind gusts are coming from nine four. So what we got to do is we're going to circle back around Roger five niner. And uh, Jimmy, Jimmy over in the tower told me what we're going to do is we're going to take a nine six hike. And we call that a skydive channel. And we're going to take a skydive channel because that's not what she wanted. She just was looking for, she was looking for God to save her, but she can't because... God don't care about JetBlue flights. He's too busy supporting Muslims' war against the infidels. So he's busy, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of cartoonists that got to get their heads cut off. God is fucking busy. He doesn't care about you and me. We're going down. So, um, but there was funny. There was one guy who either was knowledgeable or was just trying to get some pussy and figured if we don't die... Maybe this bitch will, because he said to another girl, there was like a bunch of cute girls uh, sitting by me. And the guy was like, yeah, you know, this happens all the time. You know, he was like, you know, what do you, you know, probably the wind, the wind was a little strong, so he's going to give it another go. And then if not, he'll probably just go land it someplace else. Big deal, you know, they'll give us a, they'll give us like a, you know, a, a coupon to go sleep at a Boston hotel. Like, you know, maybe we should, maybe together. So, but he was playing it real cool, but he could have been freaking out and having an adrenaline rush. But he was like, yo, at least maybe I'll get laid now. Rico so what, I heard him trying to play it off while people were screaming and, you know, uh, you know. Uh, but no, but I was actually sitting next to the person who was freaking out the most. And it was, she was going, <gasps> she was hyper. And then when the plane landed, she goes, I'm sorry, I scared you. I was like, I know you grew up in a family where it was made to think it was all about you, but you didn't scare me. You know what scared me? What was going on with the plane and the weather? So I know you think you're little, what's going on? Scared me. But you know what scared me more was that fucking nature was, fl was flipping us around like a paper airplane. We, I was in a 747 or whatever those fucking cruise ships in the sky are. And I mean, that wind gust treated us like a paper airplane. It was wild. And um, so finally on the second run down, we still had terms, but he, he put it down. And from what I learned is like, landings are basically controlled crashes. You're crashed, some going hundreds of 400 miles an hour, and they just know how to land it. But that's where accidents happen. If the wind gusts it and pushes you into the ground or the wing into the ground, it can't, the fuel explodes and you're done. So it's like how that never happens and like plane crashes don't. I mean, what are the chances, dude? And I was going, I was doing flagrant two. So I'm like, is this a, every time I did Akash fucking call JetBlue and say, you know what, we didn't get him the first time. Let's, am I going to have to text Joe Rogan again? Am I going to have to want to blow up India again? It was on the way there. Or on no, the way it was on back? the way back. Oh. On the way back from doing flagrant two. The funny thing is, is like, yeah, I got COVID doing fl flagrant two. And my sodium levels dropped so low, I could have died. And that would have been a fucking real pussy way to die. What happened? His sodium levels dropped so low. I mean, that's like <laughs> saying he died from allergy to the peanut or something. It's like, did the guy like have uh, any crackers around? Like, who's taking care of this guy? 
So, yeah. So I've had, and I was, I kind of, part of me was in the plane, go, I was kind of laughing at myself, going like, is God angry at me? Just, dude, stop being passive aggressive. Like, if you want to say something, say something. Did I do something wrong? Because you keep trying to whack me. So it's like, I've been shot. I got struck by lightning when I was in camp. I've had my head split open by a bat. Um, I almost died from, from eating bad sausage in our old refrigerator. You remember that shit? My heart rate went down to 20. I mean, what are you trying to do to me, God? And then I get COVID, you know, I go to the hospital, sodium, and then this, this flight was like, I could have died on this fucking thing. What a way to go out. What a way to go out on a jet blue flight. And I, I didn't even have the headphones to watch the movies. I had only my iPhone. So I was just sitting there playing computer. Again. I was playing chess against a computer for you're, three hours. You were in a movie. Yeah, I, I was in a movie. And I, yeah, I had to listen to the girl next yeah, to me. Go, you- What's going on? I don't know. I don't work for the airline. I'm in your position. But she was definitely, she grabbed my arm. It was hilarious. She grabbed my arm and I was like, it's funny how scared you are of your wife when you're in a loving relationship and you, like you're... <laughs> Like, I didn't want her, like, I, here we are thinking we're going to die. And my reaction was, can you get off my arm? First of all, my wife's not there. Really? Second of all, she can't see it. But my first reaction was like, get off my arm. And now, in retrospect, I was going like, that's the type of goddamn castration that happens to men after they're married. Because, dude, that is the opposite of what a man should be thinking at that moment. At that moment, a man should be going, take my dick out and jerk it. And I'll play with your put. Like, this is our last chance. Let's give each other hand jobs. Let's go out. Let's go out in euphoria. But instead, I was like, come on, my wife might, you know, I was like, my wife's not even there. So, you know, things aren't based on reality a lot of times. But we lived, landed the plane, and uh, I prayed, which is hilarious. You do. When you're in that position, you just do. It's kind of like um, praying in. It, even atheists, I bet. Even I bet you, even the biologist Dawkins would pray in that situation. It's kind of like, here's the deal. It's kind of like, if there was like hand sanitizer here on the way out, right? Even though, you know, nobody's got COVID in here. Clearly, you're kind of. It's the options there. You take it. You go, hey, just in case, just in case, you know, just in case Yanni or Drew had COVID, I'm gonna. Do that. It's like that's what praying is. You're going, hey, just in case JC's up there, and I got, I get to the fucking, I get to club heaven. I just want to see if maybe I got the, you know, I got. I, if you're on the yeah, list, I mean, you can make look, dude. If I die, I hope it's with three hot chicks. Because what if it's just a nightclub? Like Lamar <laughs> he's Odom, just, he's out there with the list. Yeah, and he's like, yo, sorry, man. You can either come in here with three girls or Steph Curry. Otherwise, it's not happening. <laughs> I imagine you can only get in with if you because you can only get in with hot women if you're if you're just a regular guy. Or you got to know Steph. I bet you Clay, Clay, Clay is probably hitting a lot of clubs. I mean, you know, his knees popped, so that's it. I don't know what he's doing. But, you know, you need religion in that moment. That's where religion comes in handy. That's why I just, like, you can't be a total atheist. Because it's like, what's that? You know, you do go to that, you know, a little bit. Um, you got to give... I give Christopher Hitchens a lot of credit. Because he was an atheist up to... I mean, the guy's... I mean, he had brain cancer. I mean, the guy, he looked like a RoboCop at the end. <laughs> I mean, I hope there's some smart people watching this to know how funny that was because he looked like RoboCop. He looked like Chucky after Chucky got burned a bunch of times. It was still trying to come. Like his, he just had lost his hair and he was still up there going, I'm going nowhere. I'm going nowhere. I'm going to darkness. Do you remember before you were born? That's where I'm headed. I mean, he was like a staunch atheist. But who knows? Maybe when he got backstage, he was like, please, God, forgive me. I'm, it's a fucking show. I got paid really well. It made me different. It made me stand out. And God was going, hey, man, I'm not here, right, dog? <laughs> but I'm that's where it. religion yeah, it comes in. It comes in handy. Religion comes in handy there. But here's the thing. If you're going to make a bunch of shit up, because here's the thing. If there is a God, he doesn't care what your religion is, right? We know that. In fact, sometimes I have more respect for atheists who are good people because at least they're doing it for more a more pure reason. They're not hoping for some reward. It's kind of almost cheating if you believe in a religion and you're being good just because you're going to get rewarded. What are you, a fucking dog trying to get a treat, obeying his master? Maybe God's a dick like that. I don't know. We're not a dick. Maybe he's just a good dog owner. Maybe God's a good dog owner. Be a good dog owner. Treat your dog like a dog and not a kid. Get it out of a fucking baby carriage. It's freaked out. It doesn't know what's going on. It wants to kill a fake squirrel. Um, I don't know. But 
since you're making a bunch of stuff up, because all the mantras of religion are just dudes creating rules to, you know, bank checks or do whatever they're doing, right? Or to just be in charge or it's their interpretation. Since we're making shit up, why aren't there, I mean, let's talk libertarian style for a little. Why, why is there more, why aren't there more options competing in the market for religions? You know, what are you offering? I'm willing to convert. I'm willing to listen. You know, when you go to like a job expo, there should be a fucking religious expo where you sit there and be like, what do you got for me, guy? And, and, and Mormons are going, yo, nine wives. The only thing is you got to live in Salt Lake City. You're going, deal's off. I don't care how many wives you offer in this life, deal's off. Because they're all blonde and they got freckles. I'm not dealing with it. I'm into fucking Latin chicks. And Catholics are like, we got you, dog. You into Latin chicks? We got you, okay? Not only are they Catholic, but they'll do anything for $5. Because <laughs> their money's just not worth as much and you got a green card, hombre. So, and they're into, they don't believe in abortion, so you can be plentiful and whatever. Um, so Catholic, that's what they're offering, right? Um, they're offering free babysitting from, uh, from priests, a lot of youth services, if you're willing to look the other way. You do get a lot of free time, though. If you're a Catholic, if you want to roll the dice, play Russian roulette with whether this priest in your parish was moved from another one and likes, has the taste for children... They're willing to take your kid, right? By the way, that's the reason why Catholics are against abortion. Uh, because they fuck kids. And you never fuck with a motherfucker's supply. Unwanted kids, that's what they're in the business of. If you like to fuck unwanted kids, you would hate the women who were not making unwanted kids. They're like, no, 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 have it. We'll take care of it. In a basement somewhere. Oh, I'm the bad guy. I love when you do the Catholic stuff. I'm the bad guy. Like the fucking dad is not out. Right, Jen, Jen Shapiro? My, uh, my, my priest, when I was a kid, was found on an island with like eight little boys. Oh, he was like the Jeffrey Epstein of Catholic <laughs> yeah, priests. Exactly. He had his own Catholic little I, island. He was this big, heavy set guy. And I remember asking my mom, like, why doesn't he come around no more? She just was the me. island popular? Like, nobody asked any questions? He was just like, these are my kids? I think it was Puerto Rico, actually. Right, nobody asked a lot of questions there. Yeah, yeah I guess. Like a vacation he went with them. Yeah, yeah. Probably convinced just, some parents. Yeah, like, hey. he was like, if anyone asks, you're my kids. And they just walked around with that glow, just like that <laughs> kidnapped glow. Remember what was her name? Uh, something smart, Alicia Smart. Samantha. Yeah, Samantha, Samantha smart, smart or something. She was kidnapped and then she got away and then Stockholm. I, sometimes Stockholm Syndrome, like, you know, if you give the kid ice cream, he may not fucking care that you're, you know, raping him every night. He's like, well, he does give me Carvel, so it's a good deal. My brain's not developed enough, so I'm kind of going with it. That's the danger of being kidnapped is Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, Catholic priests, Catholic church should be really on notice for that. But that's why they're against abortion is they don't want to mess with their supply. This may <laughs> be too much thing. for some people. It's a joke. But you're going to be mad at me for making a joke and not, even if you are Catholic, you're going to be mad at me for making a joke and not the priests who are out there raping boys. You're still putting ashes on your fucking forehead, but you've just unsubscribed from me. You got your fucking priorities backwards, Megan or Marisol. Or Tony, or Janine. It's always like an Italian or Latin or Irish name. Okay, okay, O'Hanlon's. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, there should be more options. Like, what do you got for me? Okay, Catholics got Catholics definitely got babysitting on lock. Like, we'll watch a kid take him to ball games, whatever. If you're willing to be like, you know, if you if you have a bad looking kid, not a bad deal. You get to have a lot of parent dinners and you can be sure your kid's probably not going to get molested. So if I got a bad looking kid, Catholic Catholicism is a decent deal, right? But how come none of these religions offer deals for women? They're 50% of the marketplace. All these religions appeal to men. What's up with a fucking female religion, dog? That gives them some benefits. Feminism. Feminism! Jason Mimosa is the god, dog. Here's what I'm offering, ladies, at my church, which you can contribute to at patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Here's my church. You get to ride Jason Mimosa. Here's what we do. Freedom of religion. Okay? In my religion... Feminism or whatever you want to call it. Jason Mimosa 
has to be kidnapped and made property of that religion. So, and they can't stop you. That's my religion. That's my belief. Jason Mimosa is our temple and we all get to sit on his dick whenever we want. Whether Jason Mimosa likes it or not, doesn't matter. It's part of our religion. So they kidnap Jason Mimosa. He's on the altar. They just give him a couple of Viagras and they just, you know when you go to take communion at Catholic Church, instead of taking communion, they all go up and just take a couple of dips on Jason Mimosa's schween on his little hard glue gun and 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 um and Lisa Bonet has to watch. That's part. She's got to watch because fuck her, she has it too good. Fuck that. What did she do to deserve that man? Oh my God. So why is there not that religion called the called the Jason Mimosa? Just call it the <laughs> call, call it Mimosaism. Mimosa. And he doesn't like it, but it's not. It's your religious belief, untaxed. You know, separation of church and state. No laws can stop you from riding Jason Mimosa. And then you guys get to bathe him, feed him, and, and you know, watch him like a captor because he's he's a religious, sanctimonious sanct- figure. He looks like one. Yeah, Jason Mimosa like is kind of like your altar slash Messiah slash God. And that's a great deal for ladies. I just came up with a religion that really appeals to the women. Who wouldn't join my church to squat on his dick once a week on Sunday? <laughs> right before brunch, you go to church. Dog, who wouldn't? There would even be some gay guys that join and sit backwards. they go like, how do we do this? And they would just fucking go that way. <laughs> they couldn't, you know, they would figure it out. I might join, I'd join that church for a week or two. In college. So that's just an idea that I have um, about that. And uh, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. So that is it for the day. I hope your day was long. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, remember, go to patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Giannis Pappas. Tell your friends about the podcast, right, guys? For all you people who watch live, really appreciate you for checking, checking the show out live. And um, thank you for commenting throughout it. Because you never know when I'm going to glance over and take a peek at what's going on. What happened to the hearts? There go the hearts right there. They were a little late because people are like, you know, it's down to 45. It always starts with like 300. And people are like, I'll just watch it when it comes out or I just won't watch it. <laughs> so um, Yanni Narrow Eyes is, will never be as good as Yanni. They called me Yanni Cozy Eyes. <laughs> they cut my eyes. I'm cozy eyed. And then sometimes they say my eyes, when I do something good, my eyes high five. People want you to read the Patreon names. Yes, I have oh. to start doing that. I have to start reading the Patreon names. That's something we're going to discuss. We're going to have a little tea meeting, and we're going to figure it out. But next episode will be the beginning of reading the Patreon names on here. So try to do a funny name um, and join the Patreon. We got uh, the bonus episodes of Squeaky Clean. People are loving them. Go ask for yourself. Go see for yourself. Ask people who are already there. It's a really fun bonus series and the character pieces from all my characters are about to be up and then they will be forthcoming and on a regular basis you'll be getting them there's gonna i'm gonna be going live on there i mean patreon is where it's at i mean comedy should is best when it's subscriber based and you sign up for the things that you want so that's the philosophy we're doing thank you someone said loving the new show how do we get work together at gotham again i'm fully charged um, Yanni Big Bucks. That's right. We'll start start contributing. Support the show. Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. You got my days. Check my website, Yannis Pappas, uh, comedy.com. Uh, that's what it is. What is it? Drew Films? All one word? Drew underscore films. Drew underscore films. Follow him. Also, director extraordinaire, producer extraordinaire, whatever. What do you want to be called? I don't do shit. Just be called fucking <laughs> Jay Dizzle, yeah. Jesse Scatoro, all one word on Instagram for his finger paintings. For his finger paint. Yo, when can I get a painting, dog? Come to the studio. Yeah. Yo, how are you still selling baby Socrates? You made a couple Jeezy selling. Those were original sculptors. Uh, the original sculptors from the old Mr. Panos videos were sculpted by hand by Jesse. He sold a few to some fucking eager Greeks. Oh, yeah. The Greeks loved it. Yo, they if you're it. a Greek and you own a diner, you're a big Mr. Panos fan from the past. First of all, we still got that merch up. Mr. Panos, Maurice merch, Mr. Panos merch. You can find that. Uh, just Google it. Just fucking Google it. Um, and then we got Long Day's merch coming soon. 
But if you want, uh, are there any baby Socrates statues left? Custom order. Custom order. Hit them up on the gram. You know what? We're fucking Gen Zers. Hit us up on the gram and get, um, and we don't take any offers unless you got face tattoos. And if you don't have a TikTok, my friend, yo, if you don't fucking follow my boy Drew underscore films. Okay, Drew Films, Drew underscore Films. If you don't follow him, dog, and tell him that his fucking thirteen hundred dollar bar uh, uh, Giorgio Barbusi shoots ain't, shorts ain't the shit. What was it? What shoot? You came in here with thirteen hundred dollars sneakers the other day. Balenciaga. He got some Balenciacos. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a uh, I'm into sneakers, but I never heard of those. What are they? Bla- Bla- Balenciagas. Balenciaga. He came in with some Balenciagas. So, um. Yo, I mean, you, you better be careful. Let me tell you something, Drew. You grew up in a, you grew up in a safe New York, but I think it's turning to the New York we grew up in. It if is. you wear those Balenciagas, dog, you may walk home in socks one night. That happened to me one night. I walked home <laughs> no in socks way. in snowy, icy weather. They took the Timberlands off my feet and sixty dollars out of my bus pass. Okay, I got my I got my basketball trophy stolen when I was eleven yeah, I know by know. a kid who told me. I said, "What are you gonna do with my basketball trophy?" He said, "I'm gonna t- I'm gonna give it to my girl." I said, yo, it's not gold. It's plastic that's painted yellow. He said, still, I'm going to give it to my girl. I'm like, you're not on the team. You didn't accomplish this. He's like, it's still a nice present for my girl. Up the trophy. So I gave an 11-year-old my fucking MVP trophy. (laughs) And that's how New York used to be. So, yeah, I remember that cold night I walked home in socks. What year? Yeah, when you try to avoid puddles. Yeah. You try to avoid puddles to protect your sneakers. Try ma- avoiding puddles because you don't want your socks to get any more soaked. Uh, it's so demoralizing. Yeah, and then when someone sees you, they know it. They know it. Back in the day, if <laughs> yeah. someone saw you walking home with socks, they knew what was going on. No woman stopped and said, are you okay? Uh, are you homeless? They knew. If you were a kid walking, they're like, I just probably got, probably lost his hat too. You got, you know? got. Yeah, I mean, yo, dudes used to go shopping on you. Yeah. That's a good line. I mean, dudes would just see you and they looked at you like a store. And they just went, they just came over and was like, yo, dude, I'm sorry, don't mind me, Pa. I'm just shopping right here. Let me get those nines. Let me get that fucking white Yankee hat and that nautica. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, and can I return them if it's not my girl's size? I appreciate you, dog. And up the trophy. If you kept that hat for more than a month. If you kept that more, if you kept a hat for more than a month in Brooklyn in the 80s, you either knew jujitsu or you bit. 